about them? Whenever you buy a shrub or a, a, a tree here at Waters, we always give you a planting guide when you check out. So a little trifold paper, it's got your planting and your watering guide. We're going to just go over that in detail right now. Basically, you want to dig your hole two to three times as wide as a root ball and make it just as deep, sort of a bowl-shaped rather than cup-shaped hole, which is generally the easiest way to go. Uh, it's because of the way our soil tends to be here. We've got a hard pan about two feet down. Uh, don't try to dig to China. <laughs> it's not really going to work too well because of our soil type. It's very, very hard. Some, some of you have sandy soil, but it still hits a hard pan somewhere down there. You try to dig into that, water won't drain out of it. The roots will go down there and get trapped and just spiral around. So, well, thank you. So that's why we dig the hole, more like a shallow hole. Let the, the roots seek out where the best soil is. You'll notice that we don't carry their root here at Waters Garden Center. Um, we used to, way in the past, had a lot of returns. It was generally about a 50-50 success rate. Uh, because of our aridity, um, our very unforgiving climate and soil, the bare roots just don't seem to do very well here. So like I said, they got about a 50% survival rate. So we kind of gave up on the, on the bare root roses, bare root fruit trees, you know, that sort of thing just stick with containerized. The other benefit to going containerized is that these can be grafted. When you buy a bare root rose, it's not grafted, it's just the rose with most of the roots and the, the canes and foliage kind of cut off and stuck in a bag and sent to the store. The, when trees and shrubs are grafted onto a rootstock that does better in our type of soil, we have a much better success rate with anything that you plant. Uh, roses, uh, all of our roses, I believe, are grafted onto Dr. Huey rootstock. Excellent, very resilient uh, rootstock, just done better here. So, much higher success rate with the containerized plants. After you get it planted, uh, after you've dug your hole, we do recommend doing a perk test. That means you dig your hole, fill it with water. This does two things actually. One, you're checking to see if the hole perks. Sometimes you'll have a spot in your yard. Water will not drain for anything. Uh, we have the most unforgiving soil here. It is hard. Most of it's hard clay. Uh, even if you, it, there are places like the west side of town and the uh, northeast part of town, very granity. Okay, you've got a lot of boulders. So the, the soil tends to be a little more sandy. It's disintegrated granite. But then you go a little deeper and you'll either hit that uh, caliche hard pan or in most cases you'll hit a boulder. The solid granite. You can't dig through it. You can jackhammer it out, but you know what good is it gonna do if you dig a hole in that solid granite, plant something there and then water it? That water will sit there. It won't drain away. So this is why you do your perk test. Even the caliche, if you're down, say, Williamson Valley, maybe the other side of town, uh, here at Prescott, uh, away from the boulders, Prescott Valley, Chino Valley, hard clay, won't give for anything. You know, some spots just you cannot get it to drain or even absorb water in the first place. So those areas, it doesn't matter which one you're in, you can end up with these spots in the yard that just won't drain. So uh, digging that hole and then doing the perk test lets you know is it going to drain. If the water has somewhere to go, then the roots also have somewhere to go. Uh, I've seen cases where the water drains or evaporates away, I should say more evaporates away, just fast enough so that the plant doesn't drown. But especially in the, the areas with that granite, uh, sometimes plants will get pooped out. They, they can't seem to escape from the hole, and so they just spiral around as if they're still in a container. And uh, I've seen this in Prescott Valley too, where they just smile around the hole, especially if the hole wasn't dug correctly. And uh, they can't escape, and then the plant ends up dwarfed. 
and someone will come in and say, I've got a tree or shrub that I've had for 10 years, hasn't grown more than two inches. It's actually happened many times. Um, digging that hole into a bowl shape also helps with that. We find that the roots seem to find their way out into the outer soil a lot better if we do it that way. The next step, uh, oh, also um, filling it with water helps to hydrate the hole, uh, which if you put, uh, you know, you go and backfill in the hole after you plant it, uh, sometimes, especially in the sandier areas, it'll just, the outer soil will suck the water right out of the backfill soil and dehydrate the plant. So that's another reason why we like to uh, do that, uh, that perk test. The next step is to amend the soil with the mulch. Take the, the, the dirt that you dug out of the hole and mix it with the mulch. This is the premium mulch here. Mulch can apply to a lot of different things. It's a very uh, general term. The premium mulch here that I'm talking about is for amending the soil here. Okay. Uh, a lot of you come from other states where they do things a little differently. And so a question I sometimes get is, what do I replace the soil with? Don't replace the soil. It's not a good idea. <coughs> what will end up happening is, you'll have your hole that you dug and backfilled around the plant. Okay, and the roots, you know, they go into that, but eventually they're going to have to go into the outer soil. Roots don't like to transition from one type of soil into another. They really don't like it. Uh, it there's a sort of invisible barrier there that makes it difficult for moisture and, and roots to penetrate. And so they don't kind of get out there and say, what's this? <laughs> and they have trouble rooting out into their natural environment. Sooner or later, the roots do have to go farther than that hole that you dug. So you do want to have a, a, a soil that helps the roots transition. So the mulch, it's compost. It's going to help it transition, help the roots transition from this uh, more organic potting mixture that it's in into that outer backfield soil. And then, but it's still got the native soil in it, so when it's time for the roots to go from that to the outer soil on the ground, it's not such a transition. There's something there that's familiar. So it's just going to do so much better that way. Yes? When you amend your backfill, what percentage of native soil and, and mulch? What percentage of the mulch to the native soil? One part of premium mulch to two parts native soil. Okay. Um, I also recommend top dressing with the mulch after you back build. Uh, the reason being is um, this helps hold in moisture. This goes for both uh, new plants and native, uh, established, I'm sorry, new plants and established, helping hold in moisture. And then it does another thing, it adds organics uh, to the soil because over, the, over time, all, all that you've added to that soil does get used up. When you add mulch, say once a year with the top dressing, it keeps the earthworms around, it keeps the uh, ecology and the soil going, which is important to keeping the roots healthy and keeping the soil aerated so that it doesn't compact so bad. Our soil compacts like crazy. So you, you want to take those steps to help with the health. So to use the mulch to um, amend the backfill and then use it to top dress as well, it'll help hold in moisture, it'll help keep the, and then if you put the mulch down about once a year, it'll also add organics uh, that will keep the soil healthy. After, the, after that, uh, best thing to do is water really good. You're going to have to water, uh, water the plant and then also water with the root and grow. That's what this is right here. You're going to stress this plant and break up a lot of the feeder roots when you plant it. Uh, you want to kind of rough up this root ball so that it kind of melds with the outer soil, get the, any roots that are spiraling, spiraling around loosened up so that they don't keep spiraling. So you are going to kind of stress it out a little bit. What the root and grow does is it kind of takes the, the plant out of panic mode because when plants feel a shock, the first thing they do is draw all their energy away from the roots. It's the last thing you want. You don't want to do that. So the root and grow is a, actually a rooting hormone, kind of similar to 
that old root tone that we use for our cuttings, kind of similar to that. Tells the plant, put your energy into rooting, not into something else. It's just how plants think when they think they're going to die. They don't see there's any point in putting energy into making new roots. So that's what this is for. Kind of gets them out of that panic mode and gets them back on track. So now that you've got it planted, you want to water it a couple times a week. Again, the roots are confined to this. So this is all the soil that these roots have to draw water and nutrients from, okay? So um, the outer soil, you want the outer soil to be wetted so that the roots see that there's nice moist soil to go into, but until it's actually rooted, this is all it's got to draw from. This small amount of soil is gonna dry out fairly quickly, especially if you're doing it in an even smaller pot, like a two gallon going to dry out fairly quickly. So the first year, we do recommend watering twice a week. So I know a little more work, got to baby it through its first year. But once you get past that first summer, once a week, very easy during the winter, twice a month, if we're not getting rain and snow. Some of our winters can be very dry here, as you know. All right. So now that we've talked about the planting, I'm going to let Cheryl talk to you about the pruning, you know, everybody's favorite subject. Yes? Um, how, do, how do you keep the javelina from having breakfast? <laughs> how do you keep the javelina from having so breakfast? Or midnight snack. <laughs> yeah, a uh, very good question. The javelina, most of the time, are pretty good at about leaving the roses alone. They're kind of woody. They tend to attack the little top baby. growth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's more tender up here. Down here, it's more woody. The older leaves aren't as tasty, to be perfectly honest. But up here, the leaves and the stems and the, the buds and the, the hips, they're sweeter. They're actually sweeter and more juicy and tender and easy to eat. So animals, yeah, <laughs> yeah, chickens love it too. Yeah, pretty much all animals would like the tops of the roses. Once the roses get tall enough um, that the javelina can't reach, it stops being an issue, but when they're newer, it is something of an issue. Uh, so in that case, especially during late winter, early spring, when not everything's quite come out of dormancy and they start eating everything, you know, because uh, they're, they're hungry and there's not a whole lot growing just yet, they tend to be really hungry and they eat everything. Um, in that case, you either have got a physical barrier, that means either fencing in the yard or putting a chicken wire around the plant, or having a very strong repellent, something that is so pungent. And remember, animals have very sensitive mucus glands. So pungent smells hurt their noses, and they just don't even want to be there. Um, there are even repellents that you can spray on the plant so that the plant itself smells bad. You know, right now, this, this plant kind of smells <coughs> edible. Spray something on the plant that doesn't smell edible. Something that, ooh, I don't want to eat that. <laughs> what would you suggest? Uh, we actually sell some, I didn't bring any up here, but we actually do sell repellents. Um, we have uh, three different types, three basic types right now. Uh, or four, actually. And uh, we've, we've been using them for years on javelina specifically, and they work very well. If the javelina are rooting, they also like to dig up, dig for grubs. I would go with the, uh, the granular, easy to sprinkle on the ground, and uh, it, it uh, makes the soil itself smell. They are attracted to uh, freshly wetted soil. If you're watering in the evening, that's like a neon beacon that says, Havelina, come here. We've got good food for you. Grubs, down here, dig here. So that's like the worst thing you can do is, is water in the evening because that will attract Havelina so fast. And this is the first time in three years that they've ever done it, but our neighbor just put in a huge, we call it the Havelina spot, they just put in a huge water feature, and the next, the other one next to them puts out um, quail uh, blocks on the, on the ground, and it's like, this is a Havelina feast! So this yeah. year they're just like going bananas. You know what, the, uh, she's saying that uh, one neighbor put out a quail block, 
the other neighbor on the other side put up a water feature. The javelina are flocking to the area. So basically, you need to try to make your area undesirable so that they remember, eh, we need to go to the neighbor's house. She's not going to feed us. <laughs> so the physical barriers are the best and the most, the longest lasting, obviously. Um, if you can do that, but not all of us can put up a fence. No. So, okay. yeah, uh, homeowners associations, rentals, just a lot of times you just can't fence. How you doing? Good. Uh, the perk test, how long should it take for that water to? It shouldn't take more than a day. Okay. Yeah, we preferably shouldn't take more than 12 hours. Okay. Uh, some people will consider 24 hours acceptable. Really, we would rather not see more than 12. Um, what we find is best is to, uh, if you do have a hole that's not perking, okay, uh, there's two things you can do. Uh, do them both if you can. But uh, one of them is put, up, put down gypsum. Gypsum is, uh, get the fast acting gypsum, which is the one we carry now, because gypsum can take a while if, it, if it's not. But uh, the, get some gypsum, put it in the hole, this is the same stuff that we recommend that you put around your yard and on your lawn, especially if you live in places like Prescott Valley and Williamson Valley, where again, you have that huge compaction problem. Gypsum is something, it's powder, it's white powder. It's a natural mineral. And it, it's something that works its way through the soil and kind of loosens it up just a little bit, just enough so that the water can start penetrating. If it's a clay issue, if it's granite, it's not going to work. <laughs> the other thing you can do is when you dig your hole, dig it just a little bit deeper, put some gravel on the bottom, kind of like the way you do when uh, you have a pot without a drainage hole and you put gravel or something on the, on the bottom uh, so that the water has somewhere to go until it's you know ready to dissipate. Um, same idea. So you can put some gravel on the bottom of the hole, put the plant on top of that and backfill around it. Yes. We had something in California called John and Bob's. You've ever heard it? And it, it was kind of a variety of different things that you put into the soil, and over you know a couple of years, it would just kind of break clay up and and stuff. Do you have you ever heard of it? I'm not familiar with it, but there are various types of products. It could be a, like a gypsum based product. Um, but you said it had more than one ingredient in it. It also might have had something in there like a, like a, yeah, it might have had some microbes, it might have had some um, salt breaker. There are products that help break some salt. You said this was in California, right? In the clay. Yeah. California, uh, you have really salty water from over there. It, I mean, we have salty water, but yours is even worse in California. So, um, it was salt going up everywhere. And then on top of that, a lot of the most popular fertilizers out there also have salt. Uh, insane amounts of salt, as a matter of fact. And so the salt will build up in the ground and you'll actually end up with solid pieces of salt in the, in the ground. And so there are products um, that are made to kind of help bust up that salt and, and get it to leach through again. So it probably had a, a variety of things in it to help uh, soil perk better and leach better and just be a little more healthy. So, like I said, there's more than one company that does stuff like that. I'm just not familiar with that one particularly. Uh, you had a question, sir. It's not a question, it's a job. Sure. We had a tree that was drying, and it just wasn't. We're, in, we're down to Dewey Humble, which is clay. Right. And what we did is we dug trenches away from the tree, okay. and that seemed to take care of it. It gives the water somewhere to go, and then hopefully it's a <coughs> and branch. So, like a deep trenches down at the same level down as the, the bottom, bottom of the, the hole. Of the hole yeah. I see. I had a backhoe, so it's easy to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so it, did, it did work. Yeah. So basically, he uh, when he dug his holes, he also dug trenches going out from the bottom of the hole so that the water could eventually go somewhere. And when it goes out that line, maybe the dirt is softer to can branch. Right. But it, it, it yeah. solved the problem. Absolutely, yes. Uh, well, that's uh, another thing I was talking about, the, the gravel, not only make it deeper, but make the hole wider too. And again, do this. The hole should be more of a bowl shape rather than a... Straight sides. Yeah, straight sides. That's even worse. Um, again, when I've seen people dig straight sides, um, 
they tend to get more of a spiraling going on, more drainage issues. They just have more problems when they dig that way. Uh, so you want to have it wider. And also, dig the hole wider than the pot. Uh, don't make the hole just the right size to slip that root ball into. You will have major issues there. The roots are not, they don't know what's going on. <laughs> and they just keep going around. They think they're still in the pot. So dig it wider and dig it with a shallow grade. Okay? Any other questions?